Okay, we're back for this next session. This will be lesson number six, Praying That Gets Results. What does God promise concerning answers to prayer? God gives sweeping promises concerning His heart to answer the prayers of His people. Some of these promises have conditions and some do not. We want to notice the following verses here. So we're going to take the time to read these. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Uh, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So sometimes prayer's ability to get a, to get a response is connected to our obedience to the Word of God and the will of God. Psalms 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are open to their cry. Okay? 37, 4, and 5. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Okay? Conditions. What are they? Delighting yourself in the Lord. Uh, that means enjoying Him. Amen? And uh, <clears throat> committing your way to Him. All right. Psalms ninety-one, fourteen through fifteen. Because He has set His love upon me, therefore I will deliver Him. I will set Him on high, because He has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer Him. And I will be with Him in trouble, and I will deliver Him and honor Him. Again, there are conditions attached to this prayer. Matthew seven, seven through eleven. Ask. That's a condition. And it will be given to you. Seek, that's a condition. And you will find, not, that's a condition. And it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? Okay? Again, conditions. Amen? Connected to prayer. Matthew 18, 19 through 20. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, that was a condition. It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. Okay, so those are conditions that are connected to prayer if you want an answer. Here's another good one. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have them. Those are conditions attached to prayer. John 14, 12 through 14. Most assuredly, uh, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Here's another one. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done. Again, conditions. If you abide in me and I abide in you, if those conditions are met, you can ask what you desire and it shall be done. Here's another one. And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Here's James 1, 5 through 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally, without reproach. And it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Conditions, conditions, conditions attached to prayer. Some people will say, 
just ask God and he'll do it yes he might but sometimes he says no sometimes he will say yes to our request and sometimes he says maybe sometimes he says wait could it be that sometimes the maybe or the waiting is based on what you're going to do now or have done and whatever we ask we receive from him because we keep his commandments and we do those things that are pleasing in his sight and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of the son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us command again again now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him notice that some of the things that these verses tell us about God's desire to answer prayer uh, there's no question about it he wants to answer prayer but sometimes God needs for conditions to be met so that there is a foundation from which that prayer can be met amen or answered God wants to answer our prayer he wants us to be fruitful he wants us to be successful and he only wants good for us but there are some conditions for answers prayer in many of the verses we increase our potential for the prayer to be answered when we meet the conditions we must walk humbly before the Lord we must be honest in dealing with the sins and the issues in our lives we must seek his face keep his commandments walk in love abide in him delight ourselves in him we have faith in his desire and ability to do what we ask we must ask in Jesus name and we must ask according to his will so what kind of prayer does God resist answering this is important because if we want to know what kind of answers we sure want to know what kind he says no to James 4 1 through 6 these are prayers originating from our fleshly lust and from materialism he says oh come on no no uh -uh. so let's read it where do wars and fights come from among you do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members you lust and you do not have you murder and you covet and cannot obtain you fight and war yet you do not have because you do not ask you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures adulterers and adulteresses do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God or who do you think that the scripture says in vain the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously but he gives more grace therefore he says God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble Wow mm, let me read point a again prayer originating from our fleshly lust and materialism that's James 4 1 through 6 God says no go here's another one. prayer that is focused on an earthly and temporal perspective that's Matthew 6 31 through 33 therefore do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for after all these things the Gentiles seek <clears throat> excuse me for their Heavenly Father knows that you uh, need all these things but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you hmm hmm yeah prayer that comes from hearts filled with iniquity Come and hear all you who fear God and I will declare what he has done for my soul I cried to him with my mouth and he was extolled with my tongue if I regard iniquity in my heart the Lord will not hear me but certainly God has heard me he has attended to the voice of my prayer blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me that's Psalm 66 16 through 20 amen a lot of conditions based in a lot of uh, uh, prayers we, we we pray we have a part to play amen a uh, prayer that is used to promote our own agenda 
uh, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That's Peter 5, 5, now. Matthew 20, 21. And he said to her, What do you wish? And she said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and the other on the left in your kingdom. You see, even in this example, you can see there's a little bit of cloudiness there. A little bit of, a little bit of, a, 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 you got to see through this. Uh, it sounds like she's being spiritual. It sounds like she's just praying the will of God. God, you need leaders. And God, my boys are good boys. And God, surely, let my boys sit at your right and your left. Ah, but God discerned her heart. You know our words reveal our heart. And God said, we're not going to answer that prayer. Now, are they going to sit on the right and the left? Jesus didn't address that. Jesus was more focused on the mama praying. Amen. And the conditions that she had not met concerning her heart. Yes, she was operating in the natural instincts of a mother to see her children promoted and closer to God. We all want our babies promoted in life and closer to God. That is not a bad desire and is not a bad wish. But we have to be careful that we don't impose our desires on the kingdom of God just to satisfy us or our children. Mm -hmm. Think about it and pray about it. Amen. So prayer that is selfish and does not take into account the needs of others. Philippians 2, 2-4 two says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than themselves. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Hmm. So prayer that doubts God's ability to answer. James 1, 6-8. But let him ask in faith, with no doubt. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Roman number, number three. What kinds of prayers does God enjoy answering? Well, um, we talked about prayers like the prayer of Jabez. Uh, prayers like prayers that David prayed. Uh, and we've got a beautiful example here. Prayers that Solomon prayed. A beautiful example here. Read these prayers and examine closely the content. Uh, examine closely the motivation in the heart of the servant of the Lord as they're praying. Amen. Uh, prayers like the request of Elijah. Again, same thing. Prayers like the prayer of Daniel. All right. Um, so these types of prayers uh, are powerful prayers, and we want to read those examples in your notes here and look closely. And, and, and you go ahead and you examine uh, and see what you see in there. So, what are some other hindrances uh, to answered prayer? Well, there's the lack of forgiveness towards others. Uh, Mark 11, 25 and 26 says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father forget, Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Uh, when you say, God, please forgive me for my trespasses, God says, no. Why, God? Because you are forgiving the trespasses of others. Marrow conflict, 1 Peter 3, 7. This is a big one right here that needs to be known. And so, so get a hold of this. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. A lot of times, couples and marriages aren't progressing, aren't moving forward. We're doing without some of the things we've been requesting of God, and it's because we've been fighting each other. We're not in agreement. We're not walking together in unity and covenant. Psalms 133, verses 1 through 3, talks about authority and unity. And uh, I'm not going to quote it or read it to you. You can do it yourself. It's only three verses long, the whole chapter, but you go read it, and you'll find out that the very last Verse says, it's talking about the context of the story, uh, of context of the chapter, which begins by saying how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. And then he goes on and talks about authority. You know, the anointing flows down. The anointing never flows up. But anyway, I'm going to get to that last phrase where it says, it is there he has commanded the blessing. When you get in unity, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a business, whether it's... Uh, 
a church, whether it's a ministry, what I don't care where there's unity, <clears throat> there is power. And you don't have to ask for it. The Bible says he's already commanded it. Yeah. Okay, so get your home in unity. Amen. Uh, here's number C, here's letter C, disrespect for authority, Ephesians six, two through three. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Now, honor is a lot more than just um, just obeying them or being nice to them. Honoring them means blessing them, showing them love, showing them respect. Honoring them means uh, in ways that are precious to them, rewarding them. Some of the most precious things, and you'll relate to this, that a father can receive is, and you can't see it, but on my wall over here, I've got a whole bunch of pictures of my children and grandchildren. And the little things they've given me over the years. And you know what? They're not diamonds or gold. No. They're pictures they drew with colors and crayons. Happy birthday, Papa. Happy birthday, Dad. These things show to me and give to me love, which to me is honoring me. It's not about what it costs them. It's about what they meant from the heart. And this is what we have to learn to do. You don't have to like your pastor, but you sure better honor him or her. You don't have to like your president or even agree with some of the decisions that may be even biblically incorrect. But you know what you do have to do? You have to love them as a person, pray for their soul, and you have to honor them. Jesus said, give to Caesar that which is Caesar's. Jesus paid taxes to an ungodly, evil government. A government that required its citizens to worship the emperor. Jesus didn't worship the emperor, but he paid his taxes. Yeah. Disrespect for authority will shut your prayer life down fast. Excessive worry doubts or anxiety uh, let's read Psalm 78 18 through 22 they willfully tested God in their hearts demanding the foods they craved they even spoke against God himself saying God can't give us food in the desert yes he can strike a rock so water gushes out but he can't give his people bread and meat when the Lord heard them he was angry the fire of his wrath burned against Jacob. Yes, his anger rose against Israel, for they did not believe God or trust him to care for them. Wow. My goodness. Mm, that's powerful. I don't want to make that mistake to you. Listen to this one, James 1, 6 through 7. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed with the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything of the Lord. Lack of persistence. Luke 11, 5 through 10. Then teaching them more about prayer, he used this illustration. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You would say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing to eat. He would call out from his bedroom, Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night. And we are all in bread bed. I can't help you this time. But I tell you, though we won't do it as a friend, though he won't do it as a friend, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you what you want so his reputation won't be damaged. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will be given what you ask for. Keep on looking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds and the door is opened to everyone who knocks. So indifference to the needs of the poor will affect your 
prayer results. Proverbs 21, 13 says, Whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. Apathetic answering. James 5, 16. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain. And the earth produced its fruit. Uh, so Elijah's prayer was a prayer that God respected. He had a humble posture in his prayer. 1 Kings 18.42 says, And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground, and he put his face between his knees. He humbled himself. He based his prayer on divine promises. And it came to pass, after many days, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and in the third year saying, God, go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain. Mm -hmm. His prayer was earnest, it was persistent and fervent. Psalms 40 verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. His prayer was watchful and expectant. 1 Kings 18, 43 and 44 says, And he said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. So we went up and he looked and he said, There's nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud a sm as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. Hmm. Listen to what Bill Hibbles says. If the truth were known, often you and I are the only obstacles standing in the way of us receiving a desperately needed miracle. Our request may be right. The timing may not be a problem. But when our lives are wrong, God says, before I grant your request, I want you to grow. Put that sin away. Change your attitude. Stop that practice. End that pattern. Get off that merry-go-round. Reconcile that relationship. Soften up your spirit, repent, receive forgiveness, grow, and I'll open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. And that's powerful, amen. That's a quote. So how important is it to ask? Doesn't God know our hearts, we say? God continually encouraged his people to ask throughout Scripture. Uh, and there's several verses there. I won't even go into reading them. Uh, you can read them. Jesus encouraged his disciples to ask the Father in his name. Amen. Uh, we've read that several times already. Uh, and so um, it's important for us as we conclude this lesson to understand that uh, God is waiting to answer prayer. But there are conditions that go along with prayer being able to be answered. Amen. Let's go now to lesson seven before we conclude this video. And we're going to talk about the voice of prayer. Uh, when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he encouraged them to use their voice in prayer. He actually told them to say their prayer. Many people have come from traditions where a moment of silence is considered a prayer. Others come from spiritual heritages where they have been encouraged to offer silent prayer to the Lord or to pray in silence. And it's important for us to know that None of those traditions are completely biblical. Yes, you can pray, you know, uh, in your mind. You can pray silently, so to speak. But from a biblical perspective, what does God really desire and want? Uh, what does the Bible tell us about this type of prayer, silent prayer? Uh, it's seen as a negative when it comes to praying or praising God. Jeremiah 8.14 indicates to us that it is the result of judgment. Listen to the scripture. Why do you sit still? Assemble yourselves and let us enter the fortified cities and let us be silent there. For the Lord our God has put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we've sinned against him. So look at the connotation there. Silence is sometimes attributed to the place of the dead. Uh, Psalms 115 and 17 says, The dead do not praise the Lord, nor any who go down into silence. Don't go down there. Amen. 
So we're not to be silent before the Lord. Psalms 30, 11 through 12 says, You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and, my, and, and, and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever, the psalmist says. So there's a few instances in the Bible when people prayed silently. Uh, we know Abraham's servant prayed silently in 2445 of Genesis. But before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her pitcher on her shoulder. And she went down to the well and drew water. And I said to her, please let me drink. Hannah prayed. Uh, silently. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So what does the Bible say about using our voice in prayer? Well, uh, it tells us it's important to note that reverence is the same as obedience. <clears throat> and it's not reverence to be silent before the Lord uh, if He has asked you to speak. If we maintain silence when God asks for our voice, then silence becomes irreverence. You know, it's like worship. It's like our life, our service, and everything else that comes to God. And listen, you are no different. You are no different. You feel disrespect when you ask someone to do something and you see that they refuse. So there are several phrases that consistently describe the voice of prayer. Uh, Psalms 18.6 says, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God, and He heard my voice from His temple. And my cry came before Him even to His ears. Psalm 140 verse 6, I said to the Lord, You are my God, hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. So I will call upon or to the Lord. Psalms 4, 3 says, But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. And then 86, 6 through 7 says, Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Hmm. I'll cry out to the Lord. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried out day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. Psalms 41 1. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Here's another one. Romans 8 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out of a father. Psalms 55, 16, 17, uh, I will cry aloud to the Lord. Amen. Psalm, uh, Isaiah 24, 14, and 49, I will lift up my voice to the Lord. I will lift up my voice to the Lord. And some Hebrew words used in these verses literally mean to hum, to growl, to roar, to shout, and to shriek. The men and women of faith lifted up their voices in prayer to the Lord. Amen. The patriarchs or fathers of Israel called upon the Lord. 1 Samuel 12, 8. The children of Israel in bondage cried to the Lord. Moses cried out to the Lord for miraculous assistance. Samuel cried out to the Lord in 1 Samuel 7, 8 through 9. The children of Israel called on God's assistance in battle in 1 Chronicles 5, 19 through 20. David called upon the Lord. Amen. Uh, Jonah cried out to the Lord. Um, Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus for healing of blindness. Jesus used his voice in prayers to the Father. Uh, Jesus spoke these words, John 17, 1. Lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. Amen. Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Acts 4, 24. The apostles lifted their voice. Also 7, 59 through 60. Amen. So why is this so important when it comes to prayer? Because out of the abundance of the heart, Matthew 12, 34, says the mouth speaks. Okay. 
because God wants to hear our voice. And many of the Psalms refer to the voice of my prayer. For example, Psalms 5, 2, and 3 says, Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray, my voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. And in the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. Amen. And then we've got a whole list here. Uh, we pray because uh, God is worthy of our voice. We pray because God has allowed, I'm talking about, because God has given special promises to those who cry out in prayer. Listen to this, Psalms 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are open to their cry. What about this, Psalms 50, 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I'll deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Psalms 145, 18. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. To all who call upon Him in truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Wonderful, isn't it? Um, uh, uh, yeah, so... Um, listen to Jeremiah 33, 3 again. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. You want to learn something? You want to see something that you don't know? This really well connects or references to 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. God wants to put things in your ear. God wants to cause you to see things. God wants to drop things in your heart that you've never seen, known, or perceived before. But you're going to have to call out. God hears the cries of the widow. He hears the cry of the poor. Amen. Amen. Because He has instructed us to say our prayers. Uh, key word, say. Luke 11, 2, and then Romans 9, 13. Because faith has a voice or a confession. For unto the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's Romans 10, 10. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, that concludes this session.